I always wanted to start my own company. I think my, my dad is an uh, entrepreneur, he's an architect, and so it was always in my blood, always something I wanted to do from early, early days I wanted to do it. And for me, when I knew I was ready, it was when I was just barely comfortable um, to do it. And it was it was still so uncomfortable, but it was just that, that right amount of uncomfortableness that I could tolerate it. Um, it was uh, you know almost like you know going to grab something off the stove and it's just hot enough, or just cool enough, but still really hot that you can grab it really quickly. That type of feeling. Um, it should be very uncomfortable. It should feel like you're over your skis, like you're out of your comfort zone. Um, and that's when I knew I was ready um, for me, and, and it happened when I was around 30 years old. Had a lot of interest in travel as well as internet media, so combining those together, um, you made there that, that made it so that there was some personal interest every day because it's hard to do. Um, beyond that, there's making sure that you're going after a really big market and a fast-growing market that makes everything else a lot easier, and that you can have a competitive advantage within that. Um, and that might just be execution or insight into that market um, in terms of the competitive advantage. And lastly, is making sure you surround yourself with great people, both the team that you're working with as well as the uh, ex extended team, advisors and investors and, uh, and others that can help you make sure that you do, uh, you have the right team around the table to, to build something great. Attracting and retaining talent is always hard. It's extremely hard during periods of time like this where there's a lot of hiring going on, but it's, it's also hard if everybody was available to hire immediately. It's very hard to retain the exact right people and the right uh, chemistry between those people to be able to execute along a plan. Um, so we spend a lot of time um, making sure that we, we hire the people that share the vision um, that we have, both in terms of the, uh, the company that we want to build and the service we want to build, as well as uh, the, the type of people that are going to fit with the people we already have and the culture that we already have. Um, but I think the most important thing to retain talent is to make sure that people have challenges every day, that they're motivated, they know where, what they're doing, how that fits into the bigger goal, but how they're, what they're doing is also personally challenging. That could be an algorithm that's very hard to write, that could be a sales process that's very hard to close, um, or it could be a marketing campaign that is personally very difficult for someone because it's never been done before anywhere in the world. Um, those types of challenges, setting up those challenges for people that also build the business. I think that's what really makes life satisfying and it's what makes working at a company satisfying. As we've transformed from five people when we started to, to over 140 now, my role has moved from management and sort of direct involvement with that team to leadership and a lot of senior level recruiting as well as visioning and, and positioning and mentoring. Um, so to develop those skills, I've spent a lot of time with my mentors, a lot of time with, with uh, the, those people that have done this before for me, and then I've also spent a lot of time with uh, professional advisors and coaches uh, to make sure that I'm developing the skills that I need to do my job as, as good as possible. There are difficult times. I think the best thing to do is surround yourself by people that have been through it before. So, that's uh, for, in our case, it's a, a really good set of um, in Hotel Ten Ice Gates, very good set of founders that have done this before that you can spend time with that really know the challenges, that can share perspectives. Um, it's having investors that really can appreciate this and have been through it too as entrepreneurs, not just as professional investors. And then it's uh, having professional groups of other entrepreneurs that uh, you can join and tap into and, and share the wins, share the losses, uh, share the, the good and the bad. Um, because inevitably there will be bad uh, and it's just about having people that you can, uh, you can call on to pull you through it. When you're getting going, make sure you have someone that you can turn to and a trusted advisor that's done this before that can help you when things don't go well or when you're facing a challenge. But the important thing is to set that up ahead of time uh, because when you need it, it's going to be too late. So just like you get a tax advisor well before tax time, get someone that can be a CEO advisor or a leadership advisor or an entrepreneurship advisor well ahead of before you need it.